Well, hello. Welcome to another uh, time where we can share about uh, prayer. And recently, we really have been looking at uh, the 23rd Psalm, and there's a lot there. So uh, I want to keep looking at that uh, a little bit more. And let's just, just hear this uh, again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right, right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest of the valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Now, uh, remember that the 23rd Psalm is a prayer it, uh, it is, is David talking to God. He sort of talks about God, but then he, again, moves that to you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. So he moves it. It, it is a prayer. Prayer is communication with God. So the passage I want to I look at, actually just a small phrase, he leads me in right paths for his name's namesake. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. And in the 23rd Psalm, remember, David is a shepherd. He's, but he's speaking from the point of view of a sheep here, okay? So did, did you know if you don't pay attention to sheep, they will actually keep to the same path and they will make a rut. They will graze in the same spot until they leave, leave the land barren. In fact, more than any other livestock out there, sheep need more careful handling and direction, which means a good shepherd has to constantly control and guide his flock. You see, if sheep are left to go their own way, their, their destructive habits will doom them to really to a short life as well. Because what happens if you leave them in the same spot, they graze over and over. They end up eating the roots all the way down and no, nothing else can grow on the land. That's why it ends up being barren land if they don't move them. Anyway, the best thing a shepherd can do is to keep his sheep on the move, to keep them from grazing and overgrazing and to keep them yeah, from the parasites that uh, will likely get on them if they stay in the same place too long. So there must be a predetermined plan of action, a deliberate planned rotation from one grazing land to another. And this is probably what David had in mind when he prayed. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. You see, a shepherd on average needs to put his sheep on new ground almost every week. And and what happens is when they move to this new ground, the, the sheep will really get excited. They, they, will, they will jump, they will leap, they will kick or whatever when they see these fresh green pastures, the new ground. Isaiah reminds us in 53.6, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. That, that's us. We deliberately, repeatedly, to our own disadvantage, do stuff that is destructive to ourselves and to our families. And when we turn to our own way, what it means is we think we're free to do as we wish, carry out our own ideas, despite being warned that some of these things that we're doing are destructive and harmful. Proverbs 14, 12 nails us around the head. There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. That's what many of us think. It looks right, but in the end, it's, it's destructive. Now, our good shepherd tells us he is the way. I actually said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. But we don't want to follow. We don't want to be led in paths of righteousness, in the right paths. Mark 8, 34 says, whoever wants to be a disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus tells us this. You want to be a disciple, you got to deny yourselves. But we don't want to desire, deny ourselves. We don't want to give up our right to make our own decisions. We don't want to follow. We don't want to be led. But if asked specifically, are we disciple of Christ? Oh, we're going to, yeah, we'll say, yeah, yeah. That's not me. That, that person that doesn't want to deny, deny, deny themselves or, or, or that, that person that doesn't want to give up their right to make, that's not me. That's what we insist that, yes, yes, I will go wherever he leads. But where the paths of righteousness, those right paths, or they're concerned, very few follow that path. In fact, there are very few true disciples of Jesus, those who give it all up to follow the Good Shepherd. 
Jesus made it painfully clear that there's a cost involved in following him. The cost really is for us to have new attitudes, attitudes which are not normal for us, which is why many of us don't want to have these new attitudes. And there are seven fresh attitudes needed to progress forward onto new ground with God. And these seven attitudes are really like going into a fresh pasture, a new pasture, a new ground, in order to find new abundant life, increased health, and a sense of security with our walk with God. So let me show you these seven attitudes, and we're going to hit them real quick. Um, it's pretty simple. Number one, instead of loving others most, I am willing to love Christ best and others more than myself. This, this, this is that unconditional sacrificial love that we should be having for others. But most of the time, it's us, right? Loving myself most. I don't need to be doing that. I need to be willing to love Christ best and others more. So I'm third on the list. I am third. Number two, instead of being one of the crowd, I'm willing to be singled out, set apart from the gang. In fact, the word holiness, holy, means being set apart. And many of us don't want to be that. We don't want to stick out. We, we want to go along with the crowd. But going along with the crowd possibly could be going down a path that will take us to destruction. So we need to be willing to set apart, singled out because of who we're following and of who we've chosen to give our lives to. Number three, instead of insisting on my rights, I'm willing to forego them in favor of others. Just another, another, another way of saying I am third, right? Or even further down the road than that. That's basically getting over our selfishness and being selfless. Number four, instead of being boss, I'm willing to be at the bottom of the heap. In the, in, in the sheep world, that means uh, I, I, somebody else can be top ram, right? I, I, I don't need to be that. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can go along and, and be part of the group. I don't have to be the one making decisions all the time. I don't have to be the one that everybody's looking to. I don't have to be the, the leader all the time. Number five, instead of finding fault with life and always asking why, I'm willing to accept every circumstance of life and attitude of gratitude. That's been particularly hard, hasn't it? That's been hard for us to see in these, these last few months that um, all the circumstances we've had to go through and, and trying to have an attitude of gratitude during this time. But that's, this is one of the things that, that, that I believe Jesus is calling us to do, Okay. Instead of asking why all the time, go into this, deal with life, every circumstance that we're going through with attitude of, of gratitude, just grateful that, that God's with us, that Jesus is walking alongside us, that we're able to take another breath each day, that we're able to share our faith with another person another day, that we're able to worship even in the medium that we have now even though you're having to watch this on a computer or a cell phone or a tablet or YouTube, or whatever, being able to, to take part in something, you know, um, be grateful that you have something, right? Six, instead of exercising and asserting my will, I learned to cooperate with his wishes and comply with his, his will. The last couple of days I've been reading, me and my two guys have been reading about God's will, praying God's will. And, and then this was very hard for some of us trying to figure out what is God's will and discern his will from my will, right? So you know how you know figure out God's will? You got to read what God says, okay? That's, that's really what you got to do. And you got to figure out, okay, what part of this is just me personally wanting, wanting A, B, or C versus what God wants, for my life. Number seven, instead of choosing my own way, I'm willing to follow in Christ's way, simply to do what he asked me to do. This is simply talking about obedience, being obedient to God, being obedient to God's word, being, obedience to the, being obedient to the life that Christ has called us to live, okay? So I want to remind you that God wants us to move on with him, to walk with him. He is the good shepherd. He, he is the one that cares for us, and he wants the best for us. And we, we have to believe that about this, this shepherd that's coming alongside of us, the one that, 
that takes us into these new green pastures. Paul says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Paul understands that's what Jesus wants for us. Now, our prayer focus for today, if you're keeping up with the prayer focus uh, for today, it is the, the lost. That is the focus that, that we pray for. Now, this could be a prayer truthfully for any and all of us that are, that are watching and listening to this. Because there are many times in our, in our lives, maybe recently, that we have been lost. So prayer, praying for the lost today may be a prayer for yourself. You know, I, I firmly believe that during this time, uh, the pandemic thing and everything that's going on since March, many have neglected Jesus, had neglected Lowe's or Walmart, but many have neglected Jesus and wandered around, wandered down the, the path that they wanted to take, not the path that the shepherd was trying to lead us to. So, so let's, let's have a prayer, okay? Let's pray for the lost. And probably praying for you and me at the same time. Let's pray. God, thank you for leading me and leading me down a path, a right path, a path that leads to you. God, may, may those who have wandered off, may they look up to see you coming for them to bring them back into the family. And for those who need to hear from you, God, let this be our prayer. Let everybody that's listening, let this be the prayer. God, let me be your voice. Let me be the person that shows them who Jesus really is. May that be the prayer that we all pray. Uh, God, continue to speak, continue to guide, direct us down the right path. Let us um, discern your will for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.